G'day there YouTubers, today we're at Conchega Wool Shed. This shearing shed was built in 1870 and continued in operation till 1967 when Conchega became a national park. So let's have a look around. We'll start on the, uh, the shearing board, the machine shearing board. We've got one of the uh, imported guns having a bit of a go there. Looks like it was an 8 to 10 stander when it uh, closed. The uh, shearing uh, hand pieces were driven by this Moffat Virtue overhead gear. It's always pretty popular with the shearers. They seem to think they got a better uh, cut with, with a big overhead set up like this one. You see an arrow there which on the wheel which shows you which way it has to run otherwise it'll unwind everything in the down tube and the shearer's hand piece. Have a look now at the letting go chutes. The yards are still holding up. Coming back inside now. Take a bit of a look around the uh, the pens. This is one of the catching pens on the uh, blade shear inside. A nice style of uh, gate these ones if you've got the joy of penning up sheep for shearers. Weights to uh, assist with the uh, lifting of the gates. This is out in the sweating pens, a bit further out from the shed. The shed's only half the size it used to be. Uh, at one stage it uh, could accommodate 62 shearers, so this is um, there was probably more area out the back uh, in the earlier days for storing sheep. Just have a look at the race going up in the shed. I'm not actually allowed to walk up there, but um, yeah, just walking through the uh, the sweating pans. Now this one's got a little gate straight into the catching pen down the far end of the board. This is back on the machine side again, machine shearing side. And now we're in the experts room or machinery room. That's the biggest grinding wheel I've ever seen in my life, that one. That's, I think that's the normal size on this side. If we look down just in a sec, we'll see where the stationary engine uh, uh, was standing. There it is there. And uh, a belt would have went across to, to this area here and to drive that uh, big shaft. Crossing now to the uh, other side of the shed and this is uh, where the blade shearing took place and uh, it's still uh, in very good condition. Similar setup with the catching pens but no, uh, no overhead gear uh, and I think the blade shearers just pulled out a sheep and they threw it wherever that it landed. They didn't have to um, be next to the machine so it's all in really good order and it's built with very uh, heavy timbers. A group of the blade shearers in front of the Kinchega quarters mostly came by push bike. Here's uh, a set of combs and cutters makes you wonder who hung those there. Looking around now into the wool room there's uh, uh, one of the wool tables and looking across to the wool bins and across to this uh, horrible contraption here which we'll have another bit of a look at shortly. Now we're having a look at the wool tables. A big shed like this so with eight or ten shearers you'd have two wool tables and uh, hopefully the wool class would have his own small table at the end of the, uh, the two uh, big tables. Now here's the wool bins, front section of the wool bins. Marley's just opened up one of the wool bins and the classer or if in, the, in the early days maybe the classer's pony would stack the fleeces in here and uh, waiting for enough to be there for to make a bale. This is the farrier wheel type uh, wool press. I don't think there's many of these in existence. It looks like the bottom box was filled first, possibly rammed down or pressed down as hard as they could uh, tramp it. And then the 
top box was put over the bottom box and the uh, wool was thrown up to whoever had the joy of being in the top box and then the whole lot was put under this great big ramp ramp that uh, went up into the uh, shed roof and uh, it was probably made a fairly good bale for its day but uh, it was pretty soon to be superseded by better presses I think. The roof was especially designed to uh, accommodate this very long ram that went right up into the roof into, into a spire shape. Here's a couple of blokes having a bit of a crack at uh, doing some wool pressing. The Ferrier flip type or double box uh, wool press. They were reasonably popular and you could uh, fill both boxes from the ground level which was good then flip the second box on top of the uh, first and ram it down. Finally the Kurtz squatter wool press which I think was the best press prior to uh, machine driven wool presses and uh, some quite uh, good tallies were done with those presses. Here's an old time at branding a bale after it's come out of the wool press. Of course all bales were weighed on an old set of scales like these before being loaded on to uh, transport. In the early days that was a bullock tray. Would have carted the bales down to the Darling River to go on a barge. This interesting uh, old piece of equipment on display was a jigger and it was sent end of the bush to bring back uh, logs of wood to fire the steam engine to, to drive the shearing uh, gear. All made of wood, even the wheels. So it's still in very good condition. There's another photo of it. The timber jigger was used to cart red gum logs from the river area to the breaking down sort of for the steam engine. This is the dust flocker. Used to process the daggy wool so it wasn't so heavy to ship to market. And if we're back outside now having a look at some of the uh, older equipment and having a wander around the outside of the shed. Still a fairly big building. And just having a little bit of a leisurely stroll. There's a bit of uh, fire safety equipment in here, I think. Even though it's only half the size it used to be, it's still a fairly big, uh, big building. I think that's just fire safety uh, stuff there. Yeah, we're going around now onto the. Uh, uh, blade shearing side. Uh, this is the wool room there, and then this is the blade shearing side here, and there's wedding pens out the back. And this is the uh, letting go uh, shoots from the blade shearing side. There's no uh, counting out pens anymore. So I'll just wander down and have a look underneath the shed. So we'll build on uh, red gum uh, uh, posts, stumps. Probably a fair bit of uh, manure come out from underneath there over 97 years, I would think. Now right around the back now, this is the uh, race uh, that uh, sheep were driven up into the shed. Sorry about the photography there. You're not actually not allowed to walk all the way up, so didn't go the whole way up. Right, oh, no, we'll just uh, have a look around the back of the shed here and, and um, underneath again on this side. Now, yeah, right around the other side now. That's the steam engine. I was originally uh, pulled up here, uh, driven up here from Melbourne or Adelaide to um, to dig uh, dams. But they found out it was um, time they got the wood to, f to fire it up. Uh, it was quicker to use the bullocks to dig the dams. So it ended up uh, here at the shearing shed to drive the overhead gear for the shearing operation.
owned for many years by wealthy pastoralists, Herbert Bistro Hughes and his sons, Conjecture Station Shore, around six million sheep. And here in the photo is the six million sheep being shorn by what appears to me to be Kevin Sarr. So if anyone would like to comment whether it's actually Kevin Sarr, please do so. If you like the video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. And we'll see you next time. Hooroo for now.